Have you ever been to a conference and saw somebody on stage and you're just captivated? There's just something about them. They're just so comfortable, charismatic, and confident. You think to yourself, oh, they're meant to do that. But in reality, they're more than likely doing these key techniques. Hi, my name is Lady Tina Leader, a public speaking coach here to help you access your authentic charisma. I'm going to take you through three key points that some speaking experts call the trifecta theory in order to captivate any audience member or person. Point number one is vocal cadence. First, what is vocal cadence? Simply put, it's your speaking pattern. And I'm going to organize this into four quadrants, logical, nurturing, authoritative, and entertaining. And just for fun, let's associate gems to it. So logical is emerald, nurturing is pearl, authoritative is ruby, and entertaining is sapphire. More than likely, you have a primary gem that you typically fall into when it comes to your communication, maybe even a secondary. But what I would love for you to do is to master all four gems so you can take it out, you can bust it out whenever you want to. So let's start with number one, the logical. I want you to think about Wednesday Adams. It's a common misconception that somebody who is logically oriented or communicate logically is boring. That's not the case. You can be completely logical, neutral tone, calm down, taking your time, but also being able to vary up your voice. Can you believe it? The nurturing cadence, the pearl. This is where oftentimes you want to slow down your language, you want to lower your voice, and you want to be able to have one word flow into the other, or even one sentence flowing into the other. The purpose of this is to have somebody feel safe and secure, or even open up a space for vulnerability. So you might talk to a friend and say, hey, I'm here for you, you're okay, you're safe, and if you need anything, let me know. Right, so it's that softness in order to get somebody else to feel that with you. The entertaining cadence, AKA the sapphire. When I think about this, I think about Ali Wong, the comedian and actress. She has this unique ability to switch up her cadence in a way that is sometimes even unexpected. It makes for a fantastic storyteller. Authoritative cadence. This is that grounded energy. You want to breathe all the way down to your diaphragm so you access your natural, deep, rich voice. And it's not that you want to force that in because that could ruin your vocal cords. But it is that when we were children, oftentimes people who were an authority of us, like our parents, would have deeper voices because naturally they have a bigger diaphragm. So we want to make sure we do that. And then secondarily, speaking in downtones. Speaking in downtones would be, hey, how are you? Versus, hey, how are you? That's an uptone. Generally speaking, you speak in downtones. Point number two is body language and specifically an appropriate display of confidence. And we're going to use spacing for this. Spacing, if you don't already know, is often associated with somebody who is high confidence or low confidence, which means the more you are displayed and using space, typically you have high confidence. It's associated with high levels of serotonin, which typically also means that you tend to be higher up on the social ladder. And then low confidence you tend to shrink up or maybe if you're nervous you tend to shrink up so i always say be confident by spacing yourself out even if you don't feel it i'm going to show you a clip of me real quickly because sometimes depending on the event spreading yourself too much would be grotesque i want to direct you towards my hands and specifically how spread out my fingers are when you're not able to display too much spacing, I always say, use your hands. This is true specifically for my clients who host events over Zoom, which is happening a lot lately, is pay attention to your hands. This, a closed up hand or a fist up hand, is not as confident as something that is spread out. When you're spread out, when you feel like you can use the space, even if it's just the upper torso, it says a lot. But now let's talk about the entire body. Here's a clip right here. 
If you are speaking on stage, it is important for you to use the entirety of the stage throughout your speech if you are able to. Obviously, there's some direction that you have to adhere to uh, depending on whatever discussion you had with the uh, uh, stage manager. But that being said, typically you want to move forward when you're making a specific point. You're moving forward to create that intimacy with the audience. So you're closing in the, on the spacing between you and the audience. When you're moving back, it's a little bit more laid back. And when you go side to side, hey, that just means you're not boring and you're not sticking to one place on stage. Point three is facial expressions. My favorite one is how magicians use the art of distractions to draw your attention towards somewhere where they want you to while they do something else over here. It's a way where a lot of storytellers will want to point your eyes in a certain direction. And the easiest way to do that is doing something like what I just did. If I'm looking at my hand, you're more likely to then also look at my hand. Uh, this is really good for let's say Steve Jobs when he's showing off a product he'll look at the product he's not just looking at the audience while holding up the product he'll make sure to draw the attention his eyes to the product so the audience will then draw their eyes to the product as well when it comes to facial expressions you want to express on your face how you want the audience or person to react back to you so if i want somebody to react back to me like they're surprised because i'm telling them something surprising i might have this surprising facial expressions with bigger eyes and more expression <gasps> this is what happened and you're more likely if i built rapport to react back to me with the same or similar facial expression. At least emotionally, you might feel that way. So that is the key in facial expressions. When it comes to how to make those specific facial expressions, I did a whole entire dedicated video right over here. But if you have any additional help that you need, just reach out. I'm here.